Hello everyone, I am Dr. Manika Gupta. I am an assistant professor at Department of Geology, University of Delhi. Today in this module, we would be discussing about classification techniques of digital images. So here you will be understanding what is the requirement and need of classifying an image, what are the various approaches that can be applied for classifying an image, and what are the various methods and what is the need and requirement of digital ima image classification. As an introduction, you can imagine an image from a satellite data is in itself only digital numbers. So we need to classify this information in a manner that is useful to the end users. That is the basic requirement of classifying an image. If you will look at any of the satellite images, it's actually composed of multiple bands in the EM spectrum. So all the bands together form one image, but that only gives us a spectral information. So converting this spectral information into some land use, land cover information or particular information classes implies we are classifying an image. Now what are information classes? Information classes are basically a categorical class. A categorical class like whether that pixel represents a water area or an urban area or a forested area. So base, basis on the spectral curve or the spectrum of that pixel, we can provide an information what the pixel is going to represent. So if you will look at the given figure, the first figure represents a false color composite. I'm sure you must be knowing what's a false color composite just to revise it up. This is a composition of three bands of the satellite data. So here we have taken band 4, band 3 and band 2 of a Landsat data. So here the vegetation is actually red. But however, if you do not know how to interpret the satellite data by itself, you won't know what this re red color is representing and what the blue color is here representing. So we need to classify this image in a manner that we are able to get a land use and land cover map which is shown in the second figure. So we are getting an information from the first map or the satellite data and we are able to classify it into density urban, agricultural land, forest and water. So this data is more useful to the end users who need to assess the land use land cover map. Similarly, this same figure can be used or analyzed for other purposes, maybe for water resource management, agricultural purposes, land use change detection, etc. So this is your first image which needs to be classified and this is the classified image. Now what is the basic assumption we have here to classify an image? A basic assumption here is that if it's a water body or an agricultural land or any other information class, the spectral signature of each class is different. What do we imply by spectral signature? Spectral signature is if you look here if this represents one of the bands, band 1 or the NI, uh, in the red region, band R and here we have NIR. So a vegetation would have higher reflectance in NIR and low reflectance in band R. So point might be somewhere here. However, if it's a water area, then you might have less of reflectance in both of these bands and you might have water pixel here or even here. So if you would look at the cluster of the pixels, the water pixels might be concentrated at this place and your agricultural or the vegetation pixels might get concentrated at this location. So you can see there's a difference in reflectance and absorbance in the bands R, that is red region, in the NIR region for both kind of categories. So when we are analyzing our data, these kind of things happen for each of the class. That is, maybe it's urban class we need to identify or a soil class, whatever is your requirement. So this is your basic identification or the spectral signature which changes on the basis of which class you are interested in. Once you know this, then you move forward. Now if you would look at the band resolution, now the radiometric resolution of the data and the spatial resolution also varies. In your origin, what do I mean by these two resolutions? First of all, if you have a raster data, you'll notice that the band data is 
in the form of equal sized cells. So if this is your area and you have some kind of vegetation in this pixel, you don't know exactly whether it's extending to this pixel or not. So this resolution is known as your spatial resolution. That is a pixel size which can be recognized by the satellite. So if you have two distinct trees in this zone or if you say in this zone you have two distinct trees, you might not get that spatial identification of these two trees separately. However, you will have a reflectance, a complete reflectance for the vegetation here. So you'll have high NIR but you won't know whether there are two trees or a single tree. That is why you are requiring a classification. If you have a very high resolution imagery like you would see on Google Earth sometimes or like a spot data which has a very high resolution, you might even able to identify these two trees separately and you might not need to classify an image. But because usually the image resolution or the spatial resolution is coarser, that's the reason you need to classify in the image and tell the user that this area represents vegetation. You cannot tell by this image how many trees are present there, but approximately this zone is representing vegetation. That is your first thing. What is another resolution which comes into play? That is your radiometric resolution. What is your radiometric resolution? It implies the capacity of a sensor and the storage capacity of the sensor that whether the image is uh, 8 bit image or a 4 bit image or a 2 bit image. What happens in 2 bit image? Now this is one way when you show when you see the colors. If you look at the original band suppose an NIR band this is again your raster cells here and you will notice some numbers if you look at the original cells. So this might be 255 this may be 0 in any number. So if it's an 8 bit image these numbers will vary from 0 to 255 because it's a binary digit. If it's a 4 bit, uh, 2 bit image, the numbers will vary only from 0 to 3. So these numbers, on the basis of these numbers, we provide a variation in color from white to black. So here if you will see, if you have a 255, that's the highest number and its highest reflection, that would be in white and 0 would be black. So in 8 bit image you will have a variation between 256 colors while here you will have a variation of only 4 bit, 4 colors. So you can imagine a color variation of 256 and 4. Obviously a 256 color image would have a better variation so your radiometric resolution increases. So on the basis of this we usually utilize the Landsat data in which if you will notice Landsat 7 has a 30 meter spatial resolution and Landsat 7 has 8 bit image resolution further Landsat 8 has increased it to 16 bit resolution. So whichever is important whatever is required you can decide how do you want to use which image you want to use. On the basis of this we classify our image. Now what are the various techniques we can utilize for classifying an image? So there are basically three categories which tell us that these are the methods which should be utilized for classifying an image. So the first method is your visual interpretation, second is your digital image classification and third is the hybrid process. Manual interpretation as you can understand that is a visual interpretation. Now what happens in visual interpretation? Basically we create a false composite as I had shown you in a previous figure. So you create a false composite, you give the colors to an image and on the basis of the knowledge that which uh, category or the information class have which kind of reflection and what kind of a color it gives, you will know that what class it is. So that's kind of totally on the expertise of the person who is classifying an image. So as a remote sensing analyst, you must be aware that if you are classifying a vegetation area, then a vegetation area uh, reflects the most in NIR band. So when you are creating a false color composite with giving a red color to the NIR composite, you will realize the vegetation reflection since it's highest in your NIR band, 
you will have the brightest dn values in the nir band and whatever these values are wherever that will be selected as your vegetation area based on based on this method you can classify the whole image but this kind of method will require definitely a lot of work to do and you must be expertise uh, you must have an expertise in knowing what reflection represents what so that is why there has been an invent in recent years regarding an digital image classification in digital image classification as the term suggest it employs automated systems where a computer software can analyze the image based on your requirements so that's an automatic situation however to have the best classification you need an hybrid approach because you never know the classified image as done by an automated system the spectral signatures it took undertook into consideration how good enough they were for the information classes so you need an hybrid approach where you utilize both the visual interpretation as well as your digital automated classification that's in general the three approaches which can be utilized since digital image classification is a major uh, classification technique we will be discussing more about this technique and what are the various approaches which are applied in digital image classification so an approaches can be classified on the basis of the possibilities of type of learning now what is type of learning in type of learning we have two approaches one is your unsupervised classification and the other is your supervised classification now what do i mean by these two approaches in unsupervised classification it's totally an automatic digital classification where the image is classified based on the clusters which the computer identifies itself the user only has to give how many clusters it wants the system to identify so that if you want only four classes to be identified so the whole image might be classified and in four classes and if there is no other class which no other or the spectral feature is different from the four classes those pixels might remain unclassified so that is the only extent to which a user works in an unsupervised classification whereas in supervised classification an analyst gives some reference data or the training data set for the classification now reference or the training data set is the data which you have collected for particular gps locations and you provide to the computer that okay this position represents an urban area this location represents a water body so on the basis of that uh, automatic system uh, finds out the spectral reflectances for all, uh, for those pixels and on the basis of those pixels it classifies the images now these uh, the basics of these uh, analyzing the spectra of the training sites and classifying them in other various methods require statistical methods or the discriminant methods which are known which are like maybe a minimum distance parallel piped or box classifier or a spectral angle mapper or maximum likelihood so these are various techniques now i'll stop this discussion here on the unsupervised and supervised classification because this has been discussed further in the next module as these two techniques are the major classification techniques and if you want to read about it more you can go to our next module on this here i'll like to consider the other classification approaches now our second possibility of classification is based on how do we treat the spatial unit now what is a spatial unit as i suggested first that the spatial unit is your spatial resolution that is your pixel cell size now based on the consideration of the pixel size we can divide this classification into two types one is your per pixel based another is your object oriented classification now what happens in your per pixel classification in per pixel classification suppose this is again your raster here and you have these values equal cell sizes and suppose you have certain value here suppose 255 this is 0 161 and whatever other pixels have the values here now what happens here when you are classifying this image on the basis of per pixel classification 
we get another raster here which is also in the format of these pixels only. So what will it suggest? It will suggest whatever this uh, digital number is representing that will be represented here in the pixel. So this will be a water pixel maybe suppose and this is zero and maybe something it is representing in the NIR region this is no, not vegetation so we can say no vegetation here. So that is how we are classifying an image per pixel basis we know what that cell has been classified into. So it might, there might be instances here where there may be some pixel which are misclassified and suppose this was a river but you will not know the direction or exact location of the river here and why is that? Because there can be a misclassification like this and you will not look at this, the river direction. So that is why it comes into play an object oriented classification here. So we will talk about this more I'll show, or I will show you a figure related to this so that it will be more clear to you. So here you will notice that this is water and this is no vegetation. So in this case there is an issue that it might not clearly show the boundaries here and there might be some misclassification also which may result in not showing you properly where the river is because our spatial resolution is coarser. So what do I tend to so tell by this? I will show you or explain you in the figure more about it. Ready to start. Okay, so if you will look at look in this image, you will notice first uh, figure shows you the uh, colors of the digital numbers that is represented from white to black. The second is showing you the actual digital numbers. So what is happening based on these digital numbers or the spectral characteristics for the at least three bands, we classify an image like this. You will notice that this image is a is more higher resolution image here but it still represents all these pixels and these pixels are still in the format of pixels. You will notice that there are uh, hard boundaries here. There is no mixing of it and you can see that it does not classify an image in a manner that you can directly identify it as a water body or a water class or maybe and especially how much of the area is one agricultural plot. So that is why this kind of classification is also known as a hard classification because the boundaries are very hard here and you cannot have any kind of fuzzy relationship here. That is one of the things. However, this classification is important when your surface is more homogeneous. So if you have an homo homogeneous surface, uh, when you have a homogeneous surface, you can actually use this classification and so as you see in this classification, this classification is a very efficient method. However, this classification is accurate and more efficient if we have a homogeneous surface. But in reality, the earth surface is not that homogeneous. So what actually one pixel is representing here might not be a true condition. Why do I say it might not be a true condition? As I suggested before that two trees cannot be identified in a coarser resolution. So same here in one of the pixels it could be a mixed pixel that implies it might have an ending of an agricultural field and the road might be starting within that 30 meter itself. So if that happens whatever is the dominant class the reflection would be more towards that class and that pixel will be classified belonging to that agricultural field only. So if that happens you will know there is certain misclassification and you will assume that the whole pixel is representing agriculture. So to avoid that kind of classification we usually go for object oriented classifications. <laughs>